So you think a skyscraper is big? Meet the real giants. Some folks think a skyscraper is the pinnacle of human engineering, scraping the sky and all that. But what if I told you about a structure just as massive, if not more complex, that doesn't just sit there? This thing moves. It carries an entire airport on its back, a small town's worth of people, and enough firepower to make your head spin. I'm talking about an aircraft carrier, a true behemoth of the seas. These aren't just ships, they're floating fortresses, symbols of power, and a testament to some serious, hard-nosed ingenuity. Imagine a vessel stretching longer than three football fields, displacing over 100,000 tons of water. And it's not just floating, it's operating at peak performance in some of the most unforgiving environments on Earth. These steel titans are designed to project power, to be a runway in the waves, and to withstand whatever the world, or an enemy, throws at them. Think about the forces at play here. You've got the constant push and pull of the ocean, the incredible stress of launching and recovering multi-ton aircraft every few minutes. Then there's the not-so-small detail of being a prime target in any conflict. These vessels are built with that in mind from the keel up. Every weld, every plate of steel, every system on board is designed for resilience, for survival. It's a level of engineering that boggles the mind, really. Let's peel back the layers and see what makes these floating cities so darn formidable. So what exactly is an aircraft carrier? At its heart, it's a mobile airbase, a sovereign piece of territory that can sail anywhere in international waters, bringing air power with it. Think about that. No need to ask permission for landing rights when you bring your own airport. A modern U.S. Navy Nimitz-class carrier, for instance, is about 1,092 feet long. It displaces around 100,000 tons when fully loaded. These aren't just big, empty barges, they are packed with technology. We're talking nuclear reactors on the larger ones, like the Nimitz and Ford classes. These power plants allow them to operate for over 20 years without refueling. They can generate enough electricity to power a small city. This power runs everything from the propulsion systems, capable of pushing that massive hull at over 30 knots, to the sophisticated radar and weapon systems, and of course the coffee makers in the galley. Then there's the main event, the air wing. A carrier can host typically between 60 to over 75 aircraft. The flight deck itself is a marvel of organized chaos, a four and a half acre stage for some of the most dangerous ballet you'll ever see. It's a massive, complicated, and incredibly capable piece of machinery. You don't just whip up an aircraft carrier over a long weekend. Building one of these behemoths is a monumental undertaking, taking years, sometimes a decade or more, from the first steel cut to commissioning. It involves thousands of skilled workers, engineers, and designers. Think about the logistics. We're talking about assembling millions of parts, some weighing hundreds of tons with incredible precision. The shipyards that build these vessels are massive industrial complexes in themselves, some of the few places on earth with the capacity and know-how for such a task. The primary material, unsurprisingly, is high-strength steel. But this isn't just any steel you'd find at your local hardware store. We're talking specialized alloys designed to withstand incredible stresses, impacts, and temperature extremes. The hull itself is a double-layered fortress, often with voids or specially designed compartments between the layers to absorb and dissipate the energy from an explosion. It has to be built right, built tough, from the very start. When we talk about the skin of an aircraft carrier, we're talking serious armor. While the exact composition and thickness are often classified, you can bet it's substantial. Key areas like the flight deck, hangar bay, magazines where ammunition is stored, and machinery spaces are heavily protected. This isn't just about stopping bullets. This armor is designed to resist bombs, missiles, and shrapnel. We're talking about layers of high tensile steel, often supplemented with Kevlar or other advanced composite materials to enhance protection without adding excessive weight. Below that armored skin lies the real guts of its survivability compartmentalization. Imagine the ship's hull as a giant honeycomb. It's divided into thousands of watertight compartments. If one or even several compartments are breached in flood, the surrounding compartments can contain the damage, keeping the ship afloat and hopefully still fighting. Redundancy is another key ingredient in a carrier's toughness. Critical systems like those for steering, power generation, and combat operations are not just in one place. They are duplicated and spread out. Every aspect of the carrier's physical structure is a calculated defense, a testament to engineers who thought long and hard about what it takes to survive in a very unfriendly world. 
All right, folks, let's dive into Section 5, Return to Sender, where we tackle the intriguing topic of dealing with incoming mail that nobody wants. Now imagine an aircraft carrier. It doesn't just sit there taking punches. Oh no, it's got a whole suite of defenses designed to make sure those punches never land. Or if they do, they don't hurt too much. We're talking about layers of defense starting way out there. The carrier's own aircraft form its first line of defense, intercepting threats hundreds of miles away. Then you've got the escort ships, destroyers and cruisers, armed with their own sophisticated missiles and radar, creating a protective screen around the carrier. It's a team effort, this whole defense business, but let's say something manages to get through that outer screen. Well, the carrier itself has some serious close-in firepower. You've got systems like the Phalanx CIWs, or CWIZ, which is basically a Gatling gun on steroids. It fires thousands of 20mm rounds per minute, controlled by its own radar to shoot down incoming anti-ship missiles at the last second. Then there are missile systems like the Evolved Sea Sparrow Missile, or ESSM, and the Rolling Airframe Missile, RAM, designed to intercept supersonic missiles and aircraft that get too close for comfort. No system is foolproof, of course, but modern carriers are designed to make a successful attack incredibly challenging and costly for any adversary. Section 6. Riding the Waves. When Mother Nature Throws a Tantrum. It's not just enemy action that tests an aircraft carrier's strength. Mother Nature can be a formidable opponent, too. These ships operate in some of the roughest waters on Earth, facing down hurricanes, typhoons, and monstrous rogue waves. A 100,000-ton ship might sound unsinkable by weather, but the ocean's power is immense. So, carriers are built with this in mind. Their sheer size and displacement give them inherent stability. A wave that would toss a smaller ship around like a toy might just cause a gentle roll on a supercarrier. The hull design is crucial for seakeeping. They are built to survive the ocean's fury, a testament to naval architects who understand the raw power they're up against. Section 7. Ghosts of the Past Lessons Forged in World War II Steel If you really want to understand an aircraft carrier's toughness, you've got to look back. World War II was the ultimate proving ground. Carriers back then weren't as big or as technologically advanced as today's giants, but boy did they show what they were made of. They faced relentless attacks from aircraft, dive bombers, torpedo planes, and later, the terrifying kamikazes. Many were hit and hit hard, yet an astonishing number survived damage that would have sunk other types of warships. Their resilience was legendary, and the lessons learned then are built into every carrier today. Take the USS Franklin, Big Ben. In March 1945 off the coast of Japan, she was hit by two Japanese bombs. The explosions and subsequent fires were catastrophic. Yet despite the horrific damage, raging fires for hours and a severe list, her crew fought heroically to save her. That's toughness. Section 8. The Unsung Heroes. The thousands keeping her alive and kicking. You can have the biggest, baddest, most heavily armored ship in the world, but without the right people it's just a hunk of metal. The real strength of an aircraft carrier, the beating heart of that steel giant, is its crew. We're talking about thousands of sailors from the rawest recruit to the seasoned captain. Each one has a job and every job is critical to keeping that floating city operational, safe and ready to fight. It's a demanding life 24-7, often in cramped conditions far from home for months on end. These folks are the definition of dedication. Think about the sheer variety of skills needed. You've got aviation bosun's mates on the flight deck, in the most dangerous four acres on Earth, launching and recovering jets. You have engineers deep in the bowels of the ship, tending to the nuclear reactors or massive diesel engines keeping the lights on and the propellers turning. There are culinary specialists feeding thousands, hospital corpsmen providing medical care, technicians maintaining complex radar and weapon systems. So. When you see that carrier sailing by, remember it's not just the steel that makes it strong, it's the spirit and skill of the thousands of men and women on board. Section 9, tough enough, you betcha, but what's next for these titans? So, after all this, how strong is an aircraft carrier? Well, let me tell you, they're incredibly strong. 
They are engineered marvels built from tons of high-grade steel, designed with layers of armor and intricate compartmentalization to absorb punishment. They carry a formidable array of defensive weapons, from missiles to rapid-fire cannons, and employ sophisticated electronic warfare to confuse their enemies. They can weather furious storms that would send lesser ships scurrying for port, and they carry the lessons of history, particularly the brutal crucible of World War II, in their very design. These floating fortresses are more than just their physical attributes. Their strength lies in their ability to project power across the globe, to be a mobile airfield capable of launching dozens of advanced aircraft. It lies in their advanced technology, from nuclear propulsion that gives them almost unlimited range, to the catapults and arresting gear that make fixed-wing aviation at sea possible. The sheer complexity and capability packed into one hull is astounding. They are without a doubt among the most powerful and resilient machines ever created by humankind.